小小样儿。If you like sashiko, I'm sure one day you will fall in love with these beautiful sashiko-stitched hanaf kings. You can use them for all kinds of hygienic purposes, as a dishcloth, cover for fruits, a handkerchief, or a facial towel. The sashiko stitches not only make your hanaf king look stunning, but also make it very durable. By hiding the extra threads between two layers, your hanafuki will also look beautiful from both sides. All these things make hanafuki a perfect object to sparkle joys in your house and a great gift for your friends or family. So today, I'd like to share with you some basic techniques to make your hanafuki look perfect. Step one: Choose the right fabric. Traditionally, the fabric used to make hanafuki is called sarashi, a loosely woven white cotton fabric. It is usually sewed in 34 cm wide with selvage on both sides. The more you use it, the softer and water absorbent your hanafuki will become. However, since I love recycling fabrics, I found this pair of very worn-out pants and this piece of naturally dyed fabric from a broken sheet would be perfect for hanafuki. They are 100% cotton, and since they're very used, they're thin and loosely woven, and I assume they will perform as well as this piece of sarashi that has to come here all the way from Japan. Step two: Prepare your fabric. Take this piece of tsunakiko horned tortoise shell stitched hanafuki, for example. It is measured 33 by 33 centimeters, with one centimeter edge on each side. I will leave a 1.5 centimeter allowance so that the frame stitches can catch them. For the width, I'm cutting it to 36 centimeters, and the length will be 69 centimeters. To start, let's fold the loins on both the horizontal sides in. You can either iron it or just finger press it. Then, I'd fold the fabric into half from the wrong side. Measure 33 cm from the folding line and draw a line here. Let's sew the seam. You can use normal thin cotton thread, and you want to use the same color as your fabric. To avoid knots, I will start a few stitches ahead. I'm using a contrasting color just for the purpose of demonstration. Make a couple of back stitches here to hold the two pieces of fabric together. Then sew towards the other end, covering the existing stitches. When it almost comes to the end, you want to smooth the stitches out so your fabric doesn't stick together. And when it's done, you can make a couple more back stitches here and go back towards over a few stitches to make it secure. You can use the same method to prepare your pre-printed sampler hanafukings. I like trim this edge to about one centimeter and finger press it to avoid the bulkiness. Voila! You have your fabric prepared. A 33 by 33 centimeter frame with two closed sides and two open sides. I was lucky to find this big piece of fabric. However, if your fabric is not big enough, you can cut them into two small sized pieces. Make sure you leave 1.5 centimeter allowance on the four sides. Sew one side of the two pieces together, same as how you sew the seam.
Do two back stitches here, then sew back. Then fold the allowance on the two other side and sew the opposite side again. Step 3. Draw the pattern. The pattern I like to show you today is called Tsunokiko Horned Tortoise Shell Pattern. To draw the pattern, first of all, I would fold the fabric twice to find the center point. Then draw the frame lines parallel to the folding lines and make them 1 cm to each side. For the horizontal lines, firstly, you want to find the center point. Draw a line 1 cm to it. Then draw lines 1 cm and 2 cm apart. Repeat till you fill the frame. For the vertical lines, let's start from the vertical folding line. Then draw lines every 2 cm. Now your grid is done. Here is the center point. Let's link the two points here. Make sure you leave about 3 to 5 mm on each side for the horns. Here you go, your first tile of Tsunokiko is done. The next thing is easy. You just need to repeat the pattern line by line till you fill up the whole frame. Congratulations! Now you know how to prepare your fabric for Hanafuki from scratch and draw your own Tsunokiko pattern. In the next episode, I will share with you how to sew the pattern and some very practical Hanafuki tips. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out. If you find this video helpful, please click that like button and share the video with your friends on social media. Happy stitching! See you soon!